On today's show, we're going to check out what's underneath the bucket. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for joining me here on The First Slayer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm here with you three times a week to host the show. Sometimes we have people drop by, and today, this showed up. Well, not really. I brought it from home. And what is it you're probably asking? Well, of course, it's one of my favorite all-time uh, Star Wars figures, helmets. I love this helmet. This is uh, the uh release of the black series helmets which you can buy or you could buy at toys r us but what's underneath let's do the big reveal if i can get it off i can't get it off my fat head there we go just have to do it right all right so <laughs> this is me yes it is um, this is the scan that Ben Eady did. Uh, if, you're rem if you remember a while back, uh, Ben Eady was by the show and uh, he did a video on scanning my head using a Xbox 360 Connect and his laptop with a software called Skinect. Um, once he took it home and he uh, cleaned it up a little bit, he sent me the file and uh, over the weekend, I printed this out at home, and it actually came out not bad. There's a few little issues with it, but, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do with something like this, and we're going to talk about that after we head over to the computer and I show you exactly how I sliced it. Let's go and do that right now. All right, so here we are at the computer, and we've got my head cast loaded, as it were, um, now I'm going to take you through and show you the settings that I use. This is being printed on the CR10. There's nothing really special here. It's really pretty simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to print it hollow. So what I want to do is I want to show you this really quick. Um, you can see here that I'm just going to do a cross-section view. And if we look at the Z-axis, we can go right down or we can start coming up. And you can see this... What this helps to show you is all of the um, overhangs and where there might be overhangs and so on and so forth. So I am going to print this hollow so that uh, you all can see that. And uh, we're, let's just go into the settings of the CR10. I'll just double click the process here. All of my things seem to be over in the other corner. Okay, so here's the settings that I'm using for the CR10. Now I'm using the uh, select profile, which is Creality CR10, just the generic profile uh, that comes with Simplify 3D. Um, I'm not doing this in Cura today. I'm just showing you in Simplify 3D. Uh, we're using PLA. We're using a medium quality, uh, print quality. Uh, infill percentage in this case is going to be zero. I don't want any infill in this unit whatsoever. Um, retraction doesn't mean much. All this doesn't mean much today. So let's go into the layers. Now, there's four top layers, four bottom layers, and three perimeters, which is just fine. Normally, this is down to two perimeters, but I like that extra little bit of wall thickness. So I like to go to three perimeters. Again, this is set exactly the way I normally set it for every print that I do. Uh, basically, I've I've added one millimeter to the layer height, so my bottom layer sticks down really well. Got a little bit of over extrusion, I'm slowing it down 50%. Um, in the additions, do I need a brim or a skirt? Not really, but I like to have it just so I can get the, the uh, material flowing. Uh, in this case, infill, there is none, so it's 0%. So it doesn't matter what you have there. Support, now this is where this comes in actually quite handy. I'm gonna use normal supports here at 45 degrees. Again, this is just the standard in the way that it comes uh, out, of, out of Simplify 3D. And you can copy these. I'll, I'll have these screens up for a while. So just pause anytime. If you think I'm going too fast, just back up a little bit. 
Uh, temperature in this case, uh, on the bed I want it at 60, and on the primary extruder, I'm actually, I don't need it that high, I can go down to 200, which is just fine. Um, cooling, same as always on the second layer, 100% cooling. I don't have to worry about anything else in these tabs whatsoever. I don't need a raft because there's more than enough surface area there to accommodate um, sticking to the bed. So let's hit OK and we'll switch back. There we go. Now you can see the, the whole thing and me down in the corner. Now I can go ahead and slice this by, by hitting prepare to print. It's going to do all of its necessary algorithms and crunching all the numbers in the map and that sort of stuff. Um, but you're going to notice something here. It's going to put supports in certain areas. Now, it puts support underneath my chin, which I don't really need any there, even though I have more chins on me than I can shake a stick at. But you can see down here, right in these areas, if I zoom in on that, you can see that it's adding little bits of support into some of the edges, and I don't think I need that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the preview, I'm going to go back to this view, and how you can change your views is you'll see some, some different cubes over on the uh, right-hand side of your screen, and you can go to the top view, you can go to a front view, you can go to a side view, and then using your scroll wheel, you can zoom in or zoom out. We're just going to go back to this view. Now, I know that this uh, particular model doesn't have quite an even bottom. So what I want to do is I want to go into my Z offset, and I'm going to lower the print down. So in order to be able to see that, I'm going to go to my side view again. And I know there's a little rounded area right there. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm oh, that's lifting it, so you're going to, go down and I'm going to actually bring this down about two more millimeters from what it was. So I'm going to just zoom in on that for you. Let's see if I can get in there and zoom that in for you. There we go. So let me zoom in there and I'll show you what I'm doing. So here it was, let's reset this back to normal. Oh, look where it put it, way out there. Let's drop that, center it and drop it back on the bed. So if I double click this, you can see that my Z, my Z offset is set to 20, minus 24.59. So what I want to do here now is I just want to drop it down a couple of millimeters into the bed. So that's going to take away some of that issue that I'm having. Now, if I scroll up, you can see there's a very little bit, my, very little bit of the actual bed showing through there. And if I zoom in, you can see the very bottom two millimeters. Here, let me just move that up for you again. So you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So you can see here that I've got these little bits or this little very small line right there that is just two millimeters focused in. Now I'm gonna go and uh, reset that position there so I know exactly where I'm at. I'm gonna say done. Now I'm gonna recut the model again. And what that's going to give me is a truly flat base. While it initializes the preview, let's go back here so you guys can see what's going on. So you can see it added support material again right here and right here. But if we zoom in on that bottom again, <coughs> excuse me, a little dry today. You can see I no longer have support material along this edge or down along the front edge, which I had before. So this is now going to be a truly flat bottom. 
So we'll reset that preview. Um, now what I want to do is I want to go back down into my layer range to show um, the different layers. So I'm just going to open this up. So you can see here now, there's no infill inside the uh, model itself. But if I go down to layer four, way down here to the bottom, you'll notice that I've got my first layer, my second layer, my third layer, and my fourth layer. Once I go to the fifth layer, it starts building that wall. And you can start to see that wall uh, build there. And it's also building all of the um, support material as well. So we'll just set that back to, to where it was. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it needs to have anything more done. It's going to take 36 hours and 10 minutes to print this hollow head of mine. Um, so we've already gone ahead and printed, printed the head. Now let's go back and talk about it uh, at the desk. Well, there you go. This, that's how I sliced this particular model. And it is one-to-one -one scale, as we've seen. And, uh, you know, since we took a little bit of a, a leap over the computer, he's done some weird things. He put on a baseball cap because he didn't like being bald. He had to put on his safety glasses because he can't see. And then he decided, I might smell bad, so he put on his respirator. No. Um, this just kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with, with a head form like this that you 3D print yourself. Now, of course, you can go ahead and display your helmets on them. Uh, if you're a helmet collector or, you know, if you're... A Star Wars collector of any kind, this is a great idea. You can put it right on top of your head. You can display your favorite baseball caps. If you're doing something for your uh, retail store, well, you can scan your employees and put your employees up on the shelf to hold things like baseball caps, maybe some safety gear like eyeglasses and, and respirators. Uh, and it makes for a great little um, display item really it's kind of a conversation piece <laughs> in a lot of ways but the reason that we did it was for cosplayers so if you're a cosplayer and you're trying to figure out how big should my helmet be well if you've got a scan of your head you can take that into programs like fusion 360 um, and model your helmets around the actual size of your head which is actually fairly easy um, you can also go ahead, if you didn't want to go that route, let's take his glasses off here. These actually are my safety glasses. Uh, you can go ahead, I'll pull off this portion of it. You can go ahead and lay some duct tape down over top of your head form because this is your size head. And then you can start using this as your base to make your foam armor or your foam helmets. Um, so it's a really good, useful little print to have around the house. Now, I look at this thing and I think, man, is it ever creepy. And I could have done this with a little thicker wall. I printed this one with two shells as opposed to three as I showed you when we were slicing it on the computer. Um, so there's a, a few little holes in it. Um, I didn't use any support underneath my, my big uh, camel hump double chin there. Uh, but I did use some here in the earlobe section uh, because what happened is this actually came in quite far. Now that's not going to affect you when you're trying to design any kind of cosplay items uh, or cosplay helmets, uh, but it did kind of sink in there a little bit and I'm not sure why. And For the amount of money I spent to print this, it was about 300 kilograms, not even 300 kilograms, of material I'm looking over there to see how much it was going to take but it doesn't take that much material to print one of these um, I think it took less than a third of a kilogram to be perfectly honest with you so about 250 grams of plastic is what went into printing this which is not that expensive at all considering if you're buying your filament for around let's say thirty dollars for a one kilogram roll and you're using less than a third of that well, this only cost you about six to eight dollars and a little bit of time on your printer to print it. But now you have 
a great little head for him to put things like your helmets or your baseball, your favorite baseball caps on and so on and so forth. Now, what you can do with this now that it's finished is I would, myself, I would go ahead and sand it up a little bit in some areas and then I would probably put XTC on top of this. Now XC, XTC, if you've not heard me talk about it in the past, XTC is a two-part epoxy coating that you can smear all over this and uh, just paint it on. Gives it a nice hard top coating. Another thing that you can do, because I put a bottom on mine, is I can go ahead and drill a couple of holes in here and put some expanding foam inside the head to make it a little bit more rigid for when I'm putting a little bit more pressure on there. Now there's a fair amount of rigidity there as it is, but in certain areas it's kind of soft, like on the very crown of the head it's kind of soft, so you might want to have something there to back it up. And you can use this over and over and over again. You can use your knife to cut your, your uh, duct tape off the top, I have a duct tape version of this at home. I should have brought it to show you guys, but I do have a duct tape version. And that was uncomfortable to have done. Um, you know, it, much like life casting, you have to cover your head with plastic, which you don't do in life casting. But the point I'm trying to get at is you're covering your head in something, so all you've got to breathe through is your nose, and, you know, not very comfortable at all. So. What I would say to you is if you're looking for something like this, hit up Ben Eady if you're here locally or follow his directions on actually making your own uh, scanning system using a Xbox 360 Connect and the ScanX software. And I'll have all links to that down in the description below for you today. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the show today. It's not a very long one, I know, but uh, I did want to show off this guy to you. And uh, we did print him on the CR-10S <clears throat> at home. So I didn't have any footage of it. I do apologize for that. Uh, so I want to thank all of my Patreons because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this show. And uh, your continued support helps out each and every day. Now, um, if you are interested in becoming a Patreon, we've got a lot of great things coming to Patreon uh, on July 1st, which is Canada Day, coincidentally. Um, our first episode will be going up on July 2nd, um, and uh, it, will, uh, it will be there for our Patreons, $5 and over. There's several different levels that you'll be able to get in at, uh, so go and check it out today at patreon.com slash the first layer, or if you want to, you can just go ahead and buy me a coffee. I'm just going to cover up his head. You know, he likes coffee too. Um, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. Every little bit helps. It all goes into the same pool and helps us to upgrade equipment here in the studio, get things that we need that we can't uh, source from Spool 3D. And it will also help with um, the studio that I have at home for doing all of the painting tutorials and assembly tutorials that we'll be doing uh, for our Patreon page. I also want to thank spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool 3D. They've got everything that you need from printers to filaments and all of the parts in between. So if you're looking to build your own or you'd like to get something that you've heard about online, then go and check out Spool3D.ca today and uh, just mention in the comments that you watch the show. You never know what could show up in your box. Um, so without them, uh, we wouldn't have the studio either. So again, thank you to Spool3D.ca and uh, print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. Now, if you have any questions for me, you can always drop me an email at richard at the first layer, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. I am trying to catch up with all of the comments over on YouTube. Um, I've been quite busy lately, as you know, so I am trying to catch up uh, with comments there. But as soon as I do, you guys will get to see all of the comments that I've answered, and I will do my best to answer them. Hey, if you've got a question and I don't know the answer to it, I tell you what, I'll go look it up for you so you don't have to. It also helps me and it helps you as well. So remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Until next time, my friends, have yourselves a great day and take care of one another, would you?